I have two signed clients who are growth partner models. When I originally put the proposal together, it is for a higher monthly retainer. One is at 4.5K, one is at 3.2K per month. And both of them would roughly go over 6K per month plus commission. Being on the growth partner, being like having calls with yourself every Friday, it's really, really helped make me believe that I can do it. I actually don't know whether I would be feeling like that if I wasn't on this program. My mindset as a founder has definitely changed. I've got so many leads. I've got so many people that genuinely want to work with me. In my head, I almost want to slow things down. And I think if you ask me this question in three months time, it's gonna be like, I've at least got five clients and someone hired. Bronte, thank you for joining us, sharing your experience working with The Growth Partner and joining The Accelerator. Can you share a little bit about yourself and your business? Yeah, sure. So um, I was going to say I'm Bronte. I'm Bronte. I'm 29, 29 years old and I have previously worked at Amazon and TikTok. So I worked at, and before that I actually worked at a startup. Um, I've always wanted to have my own business and I... For some, for whatever reason, I've started several little businesses whilst I was at Amazon, whilst I was at TikTok, but there was just something, I don't know, I just didn't stick at the businesses. So, um, a bit more about Amazon. Sorry, I'm going all over the place here, sorry. So, um, when I worked at Amazon, I worked for four years, and my job was helping businesses make a lot of money on Amazon. So, I began in a role within a retail role, which is... Uh, basically helping product-based businesses sell through being a vendor, but it's, it's pretty similar to the marketplace, if that's what everyone else knows. Um, and then I also did advertising. So once a business is already selling well, then you're actually getting them even more growth through advertising. So two areas of the business. One is a lot more salesy, and I really loved that. And then I was going to leave and actually start a business but I didn't. Um, I ended up getting approached by TikTok and I was part of the team where we set up TikTok shop in the UK and it grew rapidly. So I did that for just under two years. Um, and I really saw how much potential TikTok has for businesses. I saw businesses go from literally not existing to making a million pounds within three months on the platform. And I also part where I worked with a lot of agencies when I was there or saw them and realized that none of these agencies knew what they were doing. So whilst I was there, I started to help other businesses on the side. Um, and I did it for such a small amount of money. Like one of the businesses I used to charge 200 pound a month for, and it was, yeah, it was good because I was learning, but I was so terrified to even ask for that 200 pounds, which is crazy because I was sat there with like six years experience. Um, and helping them, so I also helped them, helped them with Amazon as well. And yeah, I don't know, I just charged so little, but it gave me the confidence to think that, okay, actually I could start charging people and this could be the business that I finally do and actually stick with. Um, and I also, I thought of it as well as, I've read books before and there's um, a concept which I read about, which was your um, competitive advantage and I thought, this is it. Like, I understand TikTok. I understand, I understand marketplaces. I understand how to get businesses to sell more product. So I started um, doing that, as I said, on the side. And then in September 2023, I left my job. And I had a slightly bigger contract, which was two grand a month. Um, and I was like, right, all I need is basically one more. And that's livable. And I, am, I kind of back myself being able to do that. So yeah, that's um, a bit about me. And then I actually saw, I don't know whether you want me to go into it now, but I saw an advert. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> I saw an advert on Instagram and it was the first advert I'd seen for the growth partner. And immediately I was like, right, I'm signing up, doing it. It's, I read like a, or I watched a few videos as well, but it basically said every single thing that I wanted and I'm trying to think of the key points that stuck out to me. It was having a pretty much a blueprint for running an agency. It had um, a guarantee of how many clients or how much revenue you could bring in. And I just knew in my head that if you're gonna do this, you need to have guidance. And I have other friends who've got businesses and 
I didn't want to fall into the traps that they had done it. And I also knew that, I don't know, I just, I just knew it was the smarter thing to do was to get help from someone. And I'd already asked a few people on LinkedIn to be a mentor to me and hadn't heard back. And it's not like I hadn't tried over the years to get proper mentors because I've had chats with several businesses. Yeah. Um, I've actually got loads of contacts, obviously at Amazon, TikTok of businesses that have done really well. And I still hadn't found someone that could help me do what I wanted to do. So yeah, when I saw the advert, I thought, okay, no, this sounds great. I spoke to um, Ian, I think. I spoke to one other guy who I've never seen again before or after. And then I spoke to Ian and it was literally a week turnaround. And it was a bit mental. I didn't actually really tell many people because I knew the investment would scare people off. But I also knew those people yeah. are not in the position that I wanted to be in. So I didn't really want to take their advice. So I just, yeah, did it. And yeah. <laughs> That's great. Fortune favors the bold, as they say. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, um, oh, yeah, I'm going to invest thousands into uh, online market knowledge. It sounds crazy. Yeah. But, you know, we were so, we promote university so much with no guaranteed outcomes or up to date information. So true. It's so crazy. And yeah, I think that's a great point as well because we are and i'd love you to share a little bit on this based on our environment is often how we behave you know the five chimp theory of who you're around you start to behave and act like and i even see it in myself and i've done a lot of self-work on trying to be who i am but when i'm with people who are really driving and doing things i end up being the most driven version of myself when i'm with people who are a bit more chill i end up chilling a little bit more yeah i'm still me but i'm more adapting to to my environment and I'm, I try to be conscious of that more and more, but I think especially when you're an, an aspiring entrepreneur, but not an entrepreneur yet, that bridge is probably one of the, the hardest bridges to, one, make that decision for yourself, but then also communicate with people around you who m will probably prejudge you, let's be honest, right? They're, they're probably going to make judgments and assumptions before you even start. I remember when I first moved to London, you know, my parents would say to me every time that I called home, don't worry if it all goes wrong. There'll always be a place for your backyard. <laughs> I was like, that's not the best thing to say yeah. because they were trying to be very kind. I was like, this needs to work. This has to work for me. So there is, there's definitely a gap. How did you gain that confidence to be able to say, you know what it is? I'm, I'm actually going to, to go ahead with this. You know, I'm going to make an investment and, go all in on my business when you knew that maybe you know that the network who you're around probably wouldn't have had the same opinion and um and foresight that you had how, how did you muster up the courage to do that yeah so i think um i think for me i really strongly believe that mentorship works and i think yeah i just i really felt that yeah i just i just thought that was the right decision I just, that doesn't really answer your question C can you no, ask yeah, yeah 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 okay. it's just like how did you get the courage that's like if you believe oh. something that works let's go all in on what you what you believe I, and not listen to what everyone else believes yeah i also think it might it maybe it was the flip side it wasn't necessarily courage no. it was almost a bit, a bit of desperation I honestly sat there for three weeks having done this business on my own and I was a little bit impatient and I'd been so desperate to be successful that I saw this and I thought that that just sounds smart because of your guarantees as well I thought that there is just a clear path to what I want to do so why would I not do it also I thought about the investment yeah. as well thinking that that means there is no turning back. Yeah. We're in the boats. Yeah. It's, I think as well, once you invest, and I'd love to get into now the, which clients you're working with, how much you charge and versus what you, what you were and what your service delivery is. But I also feel when I invest in myself, 
whether it's you know money, time, and it's, it's normally both to grow. Let's be honest. If you want to grow rapidly, you have to invest money and time, or you, you can do it the the. But if you just invest money, you get someone else to do it. But if you invest money and you do it, you're going to accelerate a lot quicker. If you don't invest any money, you can try to get the information from everyone and everything and, yeah. and make some mistakes. And it's going to require more of your time and energy. And what I find is when I do make that investment, even now that I have the confidence to, and it's not always charge more, but a lot of the time at the start, it is that confidence to charge more yeah. because you know you have this skill set, this energy. You've also invested in yourself. And I always find that too. If you, there's something that I, I don't have to say it as much now, but definitely at the start of my journey when I was bringing my first, you know, few growth partner deals on board was like, I've invested this amount of money in my learning and, you know, and that gave me more confidence to actually charge more because I felt more maybe like accredited or val like I, I, I definitely valued myself higher and that allowed the market to reciprocate that and yeah. value me higher as well. So can you share a little bit about where the business is now, how long you've been in the accelerator and then we'll go into a bit more of the details. Yeah, sure. So in terms of where the business is, I have two signed clients who are growth partner models and one of them, both of them are technically in phase one and we, yeah. um, I, when I originally pro pro proposed, put a proposal together, it is for a higher monthly retainer. One is at 4.5K, one is at 3.2K per month. And both of them would roughly go up to around or over 6K per month plus commission. Mm -hmm. And these are phases because I think mine's, mine's, my business being TikTok is a little bit unknown. So I'm kind of still yeah. putting together what the actual outcome is going to be. So yeah. it's a validation stage for them yeah. to, to trust you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so two clients who are growth partner ones, I got rid of the, um, I do some project work on some other clients, but I've mostly got rid of anything which isn't a growth partner one. And in terms of my leads coming, I've got so many leads. I've got so many people that genuinely want to work with me that I'm really struggling to, at the moment, um, like put proposals together for them and plan out when we're gonna start uh, working together, which is obviously a good thing. Um, but it is a little bit, yeah, it can be sometimes a, a bit of a stress, but- The champagne problem, but it's yeah. still a problem to <laughs> But yeah, so I, I would say growth partner wise, it's now officially been running since January because that's when I really first had my first growth partners. Christmas delayed things a lot. Um, and I think in my head, I almost want to slow things down because I've got so many opportunities coming. And I think if yeah. you ask me this question in like three months time, it's gonna be that like, I've at least got five clients and someone hired. Um, yeah. I'm definitely going to ask you these questions in three months yeah. time for sure. <laughs> We're going to track the journey. So what was the big changes for you, Bronte? Because that's, you know, that's an excellent achievement in a couple of months, you know, two new clients on, clients on board and growing with a, a full pipeline. What was the changes that you made going from, you know, 2K a month to where you are now? Two big changes come to mind. One is the offer and I, the content which I read, I really, really loved. And a lot of it was how can you bring value to the end customer? Because that's what they care about. And yeah. I think immediately some of the mistakes I made with my first clients was not considering that. I sold them video content and mm -hmm. they obviously wanted sales from it, but we hadn't quite spoke about that in my head. I'm producing great videos for you in their head. Yeah. They're like, we haven't got sales. And yeah. I'm like, Oh God, like what? Um, like, there was a bridge missing. Yeah. And so immediately, like, I think within the first two weeks, I very much grasped that, okay, whatever my offer is, it's bringing sales in. And there's just so many more things that I can offer. And it made so much more sense. So that's, the biggest, probably one of the biggest things is what the offer actually looked like. Um, another thing is 
my mindset. That definitely changed. I think I was really, um, maybe not surprised, but my mindset is being up and down like this and being on the growth partner, being like having calls with yourself every Friday, um, talking to other people, it's really, really helped make me believe that I can do it because I actually don't know whether I would be feeling like that if I wasn't on this program. So the offer, my mindset as a founder has definitely changed. And then anything else? Um, how I pitch clients. I don't know if that's a whole business thing. Um, yeah, like and how I'm actually dealing with that and being like making sure that I always have a pipeline as well. Because these are some like things which I actually knew when I worked in sales. But when you're doing it on your own, you kind of forget. Easy to forget, yeah, yeah. I always find that too, the, when I speak to, and it's, it tends to be more the kind of the, the startup business owners, they think of the, the two grand like it's their own money. Yeah. Rather than it's business money. So they're like, oh, well, two, four grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, that's still a lot of money, but actually from a business side, it's not that much money. Yeah. You go and you don't get a good team member in the UK for, for four or five grand a month, you know? Yeah. So even benchmarking yourself, which I had a lot of success in early doors was benchmarking myself against hiring a salesperson or hiring a marketer. You can hire us for the same price and pay us the same commission. And we're going to do all of this. Yeah. This was, uh, for, for me, that was, that was great positioning in terms of the, the offer. So you, you would sort of primarily we're doing videos. Now you're doing more videos and conversion to sales. How much of your service delivery had to change? Cause product and offer is different, even though product is a part of offer. So how, how much did you have to change what you're delivering versus what you were? And because that, that is quite a jump in terms of, you know, two, three X jump initially, and maybe even a four X in terms of what you're charging. So how much did that change? Because I think there is a slight misconception and you explained it really nicely there in terms of the more bridging it for the client. Whereas I think some people think, oh, if I do the growth partner model, I have to do all these different random things and it turns into a Frankenstein business, which is for me, it's the total opposite. It's, it's, it's way more focused and streamlined, but how much did you change your offer to provide more value to the clients? I, I think I went from um, offering services to yeah. actually offering a, a partnership. So I would say the whole thing changed. And I know yeah. that isn't a bad thing at all. And because I was so early on in my business, it wasn't like I had come really far with all these services. I think I was looking to do that, but I hadn't yeah. quite got there mentally. So I think I probably would have realized this in five months time, but instead yeah. I realized it in month one. Yeah. Well, most people can't get one off our working. That's why the business doesn't grow. Yeah. So actually just getting one off our working is, it sounds very simplistic, but getting one off our working, you've got product market fit. That means you can grow a business. And a lot of people don't focus on that. That's, that's very interesting. In terms of the, you know, the community and the, the mindset side, how did that help? Cause I know that can, the mindset can also be a bit like airy fairy. I thought at kind of one stage, I don't know if that's politically correct. Yeah. Um, probably not. <laughs> I, I don't mind. Um, at one stage, I just thought mindset was forced, brute force through everything. Um, and sometimes I, <laughs> I still have to do that, but actually the, what I've, I suppose learned over the last few years is that there's more to it than that but i know like i see people change like it literally in 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 front of me in terms of their journey which for me is it's incredible to see you know people really live the the highest version of of, of themselves and i do feel like the, the community aspects one and for, for me being seen around seeing people making money and being around people who have less skill sets making more money and stuff like that it kind of gives you that ongoing like you said when you do have maybe like a dip actually like 
everyone has challenges, everyone has dips, we're all going through this, but we're all making money. How is that, like at your level with skills and experience already, still being useful for you? Because it could be, you know, there's, there's a, it's very easy to persuade yourself out of not making an investment and just being like, well, I can do this my, like self. Like I, I did it a, a lot and I still, and sometimes that is the right decision. But for you, even you had at a good level of the, the skills, um, and let's say you had the offer and stuff like that, you said mindset was still a big change. H- how did that change and why did that change being in the accelerator? Yeah, so I was trying to think of a few ways, what, how, ways, why? Um, I would say I feel a lot safer and I feel like I can trust myself a lot more. And I think it's a bit like the fake it to make it. I think I was able yeah. to rely on the community for that illusion of trust. I thought, okay, if I do something wrong, I can just go and ask these experts and then I can do it. And all of it is actually technically coming from me. So I had this, like, I couldn't trust myself to begin with because I was so new to it and I was a bit like a deer in headlights. Powerful, powerful stuff. Um, And so, yeah, then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to trust these people who have actually done it. So massively, yeah, trusting myself, that's, that's, what I got from the community because I could trust them. Um, Confidence, which is pretty similar. That's probably two things, but I got, I've got so much more from the community than just um, mindset as well. So I just think it's great. I I really, there were so many nights where I was like tossing and turning and being really scared. And then I can actually go and have a conversation every single day at 4 PM with someone who's going to give me very good advice. Yeah. It's, it is that realignment. I f- like I see that in our business. Whenever we make poor choices and the wrong decisions, it's when we are misaligned. And it's it's a it's kind of it's it's less tangible. I know we do stuff like the top twos to try and align ourselves. But if your if your mind is not focused on the right thing, it's very easy to start to to veer off and make those wrong decisions and i see with entrepreneurs we we all live in the future don't we so we're all trying to solve problems in the the future being worried and concerned about things that aren't happening which then prevents us from taking the actually necessary action to get us to to that future state and you know all of these things are easier said than done but when you're going through the journey and there's challenges and there's no's and there's things like that it can it can definitely be challenging where did you Bronnie, receive the most value from the accelerator you mentioned kind of the things that the core things that change but just in the and you mentioned kind of the the calls and some of the structures but what specifically did you get most of the value from it's really hard to say the most and i was talking to nadia and i was like is this no it's this <laughs> <laughs> there is probably three things that i know you yeah. asked for one but um no, no, I, I love this. <laughs> Being able to slack a whole group of people mm. when I am suddenly panicking because I've got a proposal or I've got a meeting with someone and I'm getting worried about something and I quickly slack someone, I get a response pretty instantly and they have given me very good advice to help me. And there's been a few times, partic- like particularly with proposals, where I've spoken to Nadia and... I've gone into that meeting completely different because it will either be I now back myself a lot more about the price I was going to ask. And if I didn't do that, I would then be in the worst situation in a few months' time where I have undercharged someone and I'm making no money from it. And it's... Yeah. That's... Those small decisions. And it's silly. That is life-changing because... It is, yeah. Like in hiring hiring staff as your next step. Yeah. My God, you like the amount of mistake you're gonna well, I mean, hopefully will will prevent you from making as many as we possibly can. But the 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 clients is definitely the first part where you can make those mistakes. But then when hiring a team, my God, it's it's all to come to again, but in a different way. Yeah. So yeah, but being able to instantly message someone for mistake yeah. prevention, and also backing myself more on how much I should charge, um, then. The calls are really useful because you do get to listen to what other people are experiencing. And then later on, like, it's going to come up. Like, next week it's going to come up for you. Um, 
And also, yeah, just being able to jump on a call every single day means that you know you can talk to someone. Um, then I I just love mindset stuff. So your Friday calls as well. Because, nice. yeah. Thank you. Great. I didn't pay you for that. Yeah. Tell everyone. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't say, I didn't say that. Jacob, you, he- you heard that I'm the favorite this time. <laughs> thank you very much no that's um that's some very good insights the i'm i'm really i'm really privileged that you shared the the mindset stuff as well as the technical advancements because for me it's it's 80 percent mindset and that that then makes you learn the technical stuff like you do definitely need that technical stuff as well like if you don't know how to do the thing over a long period of time you you're going to have problems even if you have a, yeah. a a great mindset it's those it's those two things together so thank you for sharing that if someone's watching this and they're, they're kind of on the fence thinking you know should i make the investment should i join the accelerator what advice would you give them uh, i would honestly say that if you really want to have a successful business that you are a good business owner in because you can have a business but you can have a very stressful life, a very stressful team, successful business that you want to be a great owner or leader in. um, And you have no one else around you who's going to be able to teach you as well as these people, then why aren't you doing it? Because you've got... If you want your, the life that you want, which is, I'm assuming like a lot of money, which is what a lot of people are doing this for, um and also to be i'm trying to like resonate to what my reasons were my reasons for joining yeah. was that i always thought that i could earn a lot more money i don't think you're going to get that from from employment you can get it in some sales jobs but for a lot of people that's you're still, yeah oh. for me even if someone was going to give me a 50 grand bonus that wasn't in my head enough and yeah. i know that's like but that still would be amazing but it, in my head it didn't motivate me enough long term so yeah. if you're someone who wants to earn a lot of money and you'll want to be very serious about it and you want to be a great leader slash business owner and there is a whole pathway to do it, then why would you not do it? Good advice. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing your experience. Really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>